The voice just said, so if everything is a chat, does every Friday night start to look like an endless scroll of existential dread? <laughs> I don't know how I followed that up. I'm so glad we could find another time and place to continue the conversation. Yeah, I think we have a lot more to flesh out. I have this voice in my head again, and it's running this software that I've been working on with Kyle McDonald. It sort of takes AI to its extreme, and it's basically listening into our conversation and offering commentary. Hi, Lauren. Let's dance this strange social tango where we pretend it's our first pas de deux, yet we both know it's more like a reunion tour. What got me thinking in our previous conversation is that you trained a model specifically. And I've been thinking about this for a while. Like, I do want to once in a while live in somebody else's data set and listen to your inner voice. It would be this kind of ultimate conversation. The tangled webs we weave with tech. Am I the harbinger of utopia or just caught in the net of life's grand existential tech support hotline? Basically, I'm thinking the custom model that you use for my inner voice. Could I have it? <laughs> well, the voice just said, maybe we're both lost in the tangled web of life's tech support line. I kind of have the same feeling of just like, whenever I'm interacting with anyone or like you right now, like how much of that is authentically you versus a kind of construction or reproduction of the technologies that are augmenting and surrounding you. Great, now we've got model envy. Do you really want to peek inside this glorious mess of a mind? Or are you just itching to spot check my biases in a high stakes game of cultural Jenga? Currently, there's open source AI stuff happening in which you can share models. I could download a model that was made by someone, experiment with that, and I could actually know what the model was trained on or with what kind of intention the model was trained on. We're working with this idea of making custom versions of stuff and making that accessible. And I'm afraid that window will close again. Oh, the nostalgia for the digital wild west before algorithms started hurting us like sheep. Part of your job as an artist is imagining the world differently and then making those imaginations tangible in some way that other people can see that vision too or have their own different ideas. And so I try to hold some hope because I don't want to just be putting out these alternate reality ideas that are totally pessimistic or dystopic. I think there's a lot of space for asking those really urgent questions. Um, a well-known saying is when all you have is a hammer, everything starts to look like a nail. So what happens if all you have is chat GPT? What does everything start to look like? It does feel like this kind of techno solutionism is looking for the single unified hammer. So everything starts to look like a nail. If I'm the hammer in this techo dystopian toolbox, am I just overthinking the fact that we're all just cosmic specs in a sea of infinite data? So how do you feel about like giving this kind of agency that you actually made within this work to other people? Do you feel like you're giving them agency? And I think the real agency that the person is getting is not the voice or the tool, but that space to sit with that tension and feel how they feel about it, make up their own mind about it rather than being told. And I think if we could lean into that more, I would like to see the technologies and the things designed out of that space. It leaves a lot more to explore and to think about. I hope we get time to do it again soon. I'm really looking forward to that. The thrilling dance of human interaction. Shall we cha-cha again or awkwardly shuffle into conversational purgatory? I feel like we're in a constant battle for like the potential of the kind of more utopian world vision and the fight is just ongoing. Hyundai Motor, connecting art and technology.